Hi everyone and welcome to this video where we're going to carry on our track and work on the percussion. So when it comes to our samples and loops, there's a lot of different ways we can bring them into the project or use them in the project with the ADSR sample manager. So, stop that preview. What we'll do is we'll start off by searching for some tags and we'll go with, let's go to H for hat. We could just type it in the top but I'll just search it here. So we've got hi-hat, open, closed or just hi-hats in general. So we can select that tag and then click through some of these. But I'm actually going to go into the file folder here. We'll go into the new techno packs. We'll go into the expansion pack, drum hits, and we can see we've got hats here. And what I can actually do to spice things up a little bit is use the random button to choose a sample from this list. I could narrow that down further by turning off loop. So now we're only dealing with one shots. And we can see the tags down here. And what we can do is we can actually add a tag as well. So I like these, they sound a bit saturated. I could just type in saturated and you see how it auto populates. So there's already a tag for that. So I'm just gonna add that tag. And if I want to do that for multiple samples, then I can do that using the shift command. You can see I've selected these multiple samples. And I can unselect them with this big button here. I can also use the command function so I can choose them, but they don't all have to be in a row. And I can also select them just by clicking at the indicator button here. And now you can see that we can add or remove tags. We can change the type from one shot to loop. And we can also alter the BPM as well. We can halve it, double it, or actually add a value. And it also tells us how many files we've got. We can favorite those files. So we've just favorited all three of those. And we can also drag them into the project as well. So if I was to drag these in, you can see here that it's actually going to drag these in all three of them. And if I press command, I can do it on a track by track basis, or I can put them in clips in the same track. So I'm not going to do that. I'll just leave that there. But that is a nice way of working with the ADSR sample manager, just as a bit of a management tool. So you don't actually have to use it with MIDI if you don't want to, but in this case, I'm going to use it as MIDI. So I'll just deselect these. In fact, what I'll do is I'll select all of them and we'll just give them a tag. I'll just tag them as new. And it's just adding that tag to all of these because they're part of my new techno packs. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to remove that saturated tag. And in this case, it's just removed it from that singular sample, but I could move, get rid of some of these other tags as well. So you can see, we can play the hat just by clicking it. We have these start and end trim markers. So if I use the keyboard now, You can hear we can cut off the start or we can cut off the end. And we have a few different modes. We've got stop, loop and full. So full means that if I touch the keyboard, even if I do it really quickly, it's going to play the full sample. So quite handy for loops. We then have stop which is going to act like a gate. So the sample is only going to play for as long as I hold down the key. And this is probably the most useful for if you're playing something in. So if I just play something, and you can see we can now actually control this because it's in stop mode. We have control over the length of our sample. So we've got full, stop, and loop. And what loop is going to do is it's going to treat the sample like a loop. So it's going to continually play 
whilst a note is being held. So if I play this, we might actually get two cycles of the sample for one note. I'll just make it longer so you might be able to hear it. There we go. So you can see it's cycling round. And if we combine that with the loop points we have here, or the trim points, we can get some interesting results. We can get some glitchy and looped sounds. So that's actually quite nice. I think that would sound good with some reverb. There we go. Some on the spot sound design. But for now, let's just work with this as it is as a one shot. We've then got the playback mode. And at the moment it's playing back forward, but we can change that to back or ping pong. So while we're here, we might as well demonstrate that. And you hear how it played backwards there. What I'll do is I'll actually show you this on the next sample. So we've got this one in place. I'm happy with that. And whilst we were playing with the sends and returns, which I've already set up over here, what I'm going to do is just give that a bit of room. Just like that, that will do. And we're now going to move on to our next sound. So let's just do a bit of housekeeping. So that's our offbeat hat. We'll color code it green. And all I'm going to do is duplicate it and we'll rename this to Shaker. So let's now get a Shaker in the mix. So firstly, I'm going to delete all of this and I'm just going to do one elongated note like that. And if we hit play, at the moment, we've set this to stop. So it's just going to play once and then stop. But now we're going to look for a shaker. So let's get rid of our filters and we're going to just search shaker and we are looking at one shots at the moment so we don't have any shaker one shots in the library. What we could also alternatively do if we didn't want to use the search bar is we could use the tags which is this button here and then we can scroll down to S and click shaker and of course we need to also turn loop back on if we want shaker loops and you can see we have four shaker loops here. Okay, so this one is sounding quite nice and I'm going to show you the playback mode. So at the moment, because I've drawn a single legato note going all the way across, we can actually listen to this and flick between these and it's going to allow us to listen in context. So let's put the whole project into play. And you notice that if it does come out of time there because I clicked on this halfway through the loop, then it will correct itself when it gets to the loop start point again. So I'm going to play the loop now and I'm going to explain to you the playback modes. So we have forward, back and ping pong. And these work in conjunction with the start and end markers. And what happens is if you see I have this long C3 note, as this plays it's going to either reverse and keep looping or it's going to play forward and keep looping or it's going to ping pong between the start and end trim markers. So obviously this becomes a lot more obvious if you have a really long note like I do here. And you're not actually going to notice this take effect unless your note is bigger than the actual sample you're playing. So in this case I've got quite a long sample so I need to make sure that this note is just as big. if it's the exact same size it's still not playing so let's double that again and you'll see now when the sample gets to the end because it's in ping pong mode it's going to reverse and then we can also just change it on the fly as well but let's keep that going forwards we then have DAW sync which just syncs it to the DAW's tempo and like I said we've got the type here to change it to a one shot and the BPM so let's half it 
double it. So this BPM button here allows you to half or double the BPM value, which is handy for stuff which has been misanalyzed. So stuff like drum and bass or dubstep, usually either doubles or halves when it's getting analyzed. And here you can just click this to fix that. Or you could also reset the BPM or you could manually set it yourself if you know exactly what the BPM is or maybe just to mess around and nudge it into time yourself. So we've seen we can play this entire loop and we can also just play parts of it just by using our MIDI keyboard so we can actually just hone in on certain sounds. And if we play this up the keyboard we can actually turn that into a, more of a shaker and we have a few different modes here. So we have normal and this works on most audio. Uh, it's a bit of an all-rounder. We've got drums, which is specially made for things with a transient, such as any rhythmical drums. And then we have smooth, which is for things such as pads and anything that has a less discernible pitch envelope. So in this case, I'm actually going to leave it on smooth. I know it should probably be drums for this, but I'm not worried about preserving a transient here, so I can go for smooth or normal. And what I can actually do is I can get rid of this, crop this clip so it's nice and small, and I can just write in some MIDI notes. So something like that sounds quite good and um, what we can then do is we can then go to the groove we'll go for some sort of percussion drop this in here and it's now changed our velocity and I think that's actually a little bit too much for me so I'm just gonna quantize that a little bit There we go, so that's a little bit more straight and working nicely for me. And then the final way we can use audio, like I showed you, is we can actually just drag this in and it's dragged onto a new MIDI track. So there you have dragging it in, you've got writing your own sequences using a piano roll or playing something in on the piano and then you've also got just drawing in a legato note and using it for things such as loops. Okay so at this stage what we'll do is we'll add some effects racks to these two tracks and I'll turn off all of the plugins in the chain and then we'll have a look at each device in turn. Okay, so here we have an EQ, and we're just going to turn it down a little bit with utility device, and we can then automate this a little bit later on. And here we have our shaker. So once again, we're just band passing this to this small area in the top. We can then use a vocoder to give it a bit more richness and a bit of noise. So it's a very nice way of creating techno hats with a vocoder, changing the bands, changing the depth here. Saturate that. Then sidechain that to the kick, just to give it a little bit of bounce, like we can see here. And then push it into the distance with some reverb. And of course you can add it here as an insert, you can also add it as a return. It's up to you, sometimes you can even combine them. A reverb on an insert will be a lot more washy because you're pushing out the dry sound whereas using a send return setup is gonna keep a bit more clarity to your sounds. So that's the end of this video where we've added some percussion. 
what I'm going to now do between this and the next video is I'm going to add in the rest of the percussion which is using the exact same techniques that I've just shown you but obviously because this is a techno track it's using a lot of percussion and I'm not going to show you the same thing 20 times so I'm just going to bring all that in and then we'll move on to the next part of the sample manager. Yeah. 